Welcome back. In the last video, in the first part, I promised that uh, I'd speak more about the 22s and specifically about the rifles um, and marksmanship. But let's recap a little bit about uh, the first episode. Um, in talking about ammunition, I described the differences between uh, the various velocities and what they do with regard to, especially with regard to uh, instability at the speed of sound. And um, I also explained that 22 uh, standard velocity ammunition uh, is, is actually quite, it's usually made uh, a little bit higher standard than the typical uh, high velocity hunting ammunition which is intended uh, for, basically it's intended for greater speed with suitable accuracy but not necessarily extreme accuracy. Uh, if we're going to get into competitive shooting, if we really want to exceed uh, in competitive shooting, uh, you want to have, you, you want to be able to establish a certain amount of confidence, you know, um, nothing succeeds like success and for that reason you don't want to have ammunition which is constantly uh, fighting at odds with your progress. So if you have, if you have ammunition that, uh, you know, really you can't count on to, uh, to give you uh, a bullet hole where you've been actually aiming and where you release trigger, uh, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to really uh, cause you to uh, get discouraged. Now I'm, I'm aware, uh, I'm, I'm very much aware of the fact that we just can't go to the store anymore and buy whatever ammunition we want to buy. Um, those, those days are going to be uh, a while in coming at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, there's going to be there's going to be shortages of uh, much of the ammunition out there. And uh, it's also a it's also a fact that uh, competitive shooters, people who people who need to have uh, accurate ammunition, and when I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about uh, competition accuracy ammunition, that stuff really never went away because most people simply can't they can't justify buying ammunition uh, you know, to, to just shoot uh, for plinking purposes when it costs, uh, you know, 10 or 15 dollars for a, for a box of 50 uh, or more. So, but there is a, the standard velocity, uh, so-called target grade uh, ammunition, which is below the speed of sound uh, and which is, which is packaged, uh, you know, carefully and is, and is sold for the purpose of uh, competitive practice uh, or for or for informal, uh, you know, target shooting. That stuff has become a little bit scarce simply because the people who want it, they really need it. They have, if if they shoot at clubs regularly, they go through a bunch of it, and so they they buy it whenever it's available and wherever it's available, and they pretty quickly exhaust the supplies, at least that you can see on the shelves. So. Uh, I, I know that that's I know that that's an issue right now, but I'm I'm speaking for all time. So this is you know this this video will last uh, presumably uh, beyond uh, that point when uh, things start to bubble back to the surface again, and hopefully that won't be uh, long in coming. Uh, so we just have to kind of work around that and do our best to practice within the limits of the ammunition. Now. Uh, I always recommend that a person that a person doesn't frustrate himself when he's learning to shoot, um, and and stays on the stays on the proper ground to begin with. So let's talk about the kind of uh, rifle. Uh, I'm holding in my hand here the the most probably the most single single po most popular uh, gun on the market in this country. Uh, it's the it's the Ruger 1022. It's a gun I've had for a number of years, and and it's a it's a fabulous shooter. It's very reliable. It's very accurate, and it's the last gun I would recommend for uh, training. Um, if I were to score it uh, on a scale of one to ten, with uh, one being the lowest and ten being the highest, I would I would have to score this around two for training. Um, it's it. it it fulfills some requirements. Um, it, this this gun has a, and it's been cleared and everything off the camera. Uh, this gun has a uh, two and a half pound trigger that I 
uh, that I worked on. Um, it's it's got a it's got a very crisp trigger, so it fulfills that requirement. Uh, it's quite accurate, and you know, just I just like to I'd like to make a comment about something that I see frequently. Um, it's not necessary unless unless you need to have weight out front. Uh, it's not necessary to uh, throw away the barrel that Ruger gives you and put on a barrel that's made up the road here in uh, you know Green Mountain Barrel Company plant that's a few miles away. Uh, it's not necessary to do that. These 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 barrels are very accurate. This 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 gun uh, with the correct ammo will group a uh, minute of angle accuracy. Now it's not it's not a target weighted barrel. In other words, the weight forward weight forward is is a little light, um, but it's a sporter gun. It's it's great for it's it's great for carrying, and it's it's a lot nicer for for carrying all day long than a big uh, one inch uh, bull bull barrel. So don't get don't get hung up on don't get hung up on specifics like that. Um, but it has it has a, a proper length stock. It's got it's got uh, sling swivels, which become important uh, for practicing. And it's got all the things that it, it's got all the things that a good uh, that a good rifle uh, needs to be uh, a good trainer, except for the fact that it has the uh, auto cycling function. Now, what's wrong with that? It's up here between our ears. I can't help it. I don't know of anybody else that can help it, but there's something very uh, titillating about having an auto loader. The manufacturers know it. That's why this gun has established itself as one of the as one of the most popular firearms in the American industry, is because uh, pulling the trigger is just an awful lot of fun. Uh, you know, you can keep on shooting this thing to your heart's content. You can stop. You know, Ruger, Ruger came out with the BX-25 magazine, there's people out there with double drum magazines. If all you want to do is pull the trigger and, and watch things you know, fly and all that, uh, this is a great gun to do it with, it's a wonderful platform to do it with. The only problem is, is that it's got, no, it's got no governing feature because the governing feature is between our ears. Um, it's a gun that, it, you know, auto-loading guns do not inspire a person to uh, practice. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned in the previous video, when, when, you have, when you have an absolute control put on you, uh, it, things don't go wrong. When a, when, a, when a boy years ago was given a Remington or a Winchester 22 single shot, uh, that that you had to, that you had to cock the that you had to cock the firing pin manually after you loaded it, um, you know those kids, kids of my day, uh, they learned how to shoot very proficiently, and I say and I say extremely proficiently because you know ammo, we bought our ammo with our uh, paper route money, or we bought our uh, ammo with uh, shoe shine money that we made down on the corner or something like that. Uh, it was hard to come by to buy a box, of, buy a, a fifty cent box of twenty two shorts, or a seventy five cent box of twenty two long rifles. It was a huge expenditure. That was that was at the very least one or two weeks uh, allowance, or it was or it was a, a few days of uh, working uh, in order to get that money. You know, I mean, th th this is is nothing different now. Th that fifty cents then. Is now uh, the five dollars or the four dollars? Everything, everything has become, you know, because of inflation, things have uh, simply uh, changed, but they remain the same. But if you think of your ammunition as a valuable, as a valuable thing, one shot at a time, uh, that's how you progress uh, in in training. When um, this is true now, this. This is true now, no matter what it is. Everybody wants to. Everybody wants to jump into the pool at the deep end. Everybody wants to be able to do. Uh, the, they they want to do do it all the first day. Uh, life tells us that things aren't like that. Um, before you could get before you could get your driver's license, you had to learn how to drive. You might have you might have uh, banged into a few things, or you might have scrub, uh, scuffed the uh, hubcaps uh, on the curb. And things like that. 
But everybody has to begin someplace. And they should not begin by doing what I see so uh, often. Uh, it's very unfortunate when I go to the range and I see a young boy who's, I see a young boy or a young girl who's there to, they're all excited, they they're grins from ear to ear, they want to learn how to shoot, and I'm thinking, what a wonderful thing to see the kids out there, and Dad is taking them out, or Uncle Tom is taking them out, and they're, they're, they have, they're going to have a great time. And then I see Dad uh, take, out a, take out a long stick magazine and stuff it into the uh, 1022 uh, with the high-tech, you know, the, 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 the techie stock, and, you know, with the Picatinny rail on it and everything, and he just tells he just tells Susie or Johnny to shoot down range at the at the ghoul target. That is so that is so uh, unfortunate because that 12, 15, 25, 30 years later, uh, all that's going to happen is the same thing. That that person is going to never graduate beyond kindergarten. Uh, that's that's kindergarten. That's that's that basically. Uh, people get people get stuck, you know. In you know, in the uh, late 1800s, people could only go to the third grade, and then they had to get out of school to go work and help support the family. Uh, that's as far that's as far as kids got in those days with education, and unfortunately, with firearms now, uh, that's as far as most most kids are getting with their education. Uh, you know, learning how to learning how to shoot is not a matter of simply pulling a trigger and sticking the gun on your shoulder. Uh, and it's certainly not a matter of uh, blasting away. Anybody can learn, anybody, it's not a learned practice, anybody can pick up a gun and just simply fire it off. Um, but we're created in the image and likeness of God. We're not created in the image and likeness of King Kong. Uh, you, can, you can give a chimpanzee a gun and stand at a safe distance and you can teach him how to do what I see most people doing with guns. That's not something to, that's not something to, to boast about in, uh, American, uh, in American gun practice. This is why we're not doing very well in international competition because we simply can't field anybody uh, who, has the, who has the competence to stand up there and to, to win uh, competitive medals. And that's a real, as I say, that's a real shame in this, in this uh, country when this is the only country in the planet that guarantees uh, its citizens the uh, right to keep and bear arms and everybody can go to the gun store and buy a, and, and buy a fire, firearm who's legally qualified to buy it and who's of the proper age. Um, and yet we, we do abysmally when it comes to uh, competition on an international scale. People uh, around the world must really, uh, they, they, must, they must wonder what in the world is going on with us. Uh, you know, we were the country that, we were the country that had, uh, you know, the John Waynes and all, you know, we were inspired by guns. We, I, I grew up with the, the riflemen, uh, I grew up with, with all, the, all the, the TV cowboy heroes and everything, and it was, it was all about guns. And uh, guns were a good thing, you know, the, the good guys wore white hats and everybody, every, you know, and it, was a, it was a wonderful environment to grow up in. Uh, when, I, when I was growing up, and I'm not, I'm not, this is really not a fabrication, when I grew up, uh, many of my friends, uh, you know, they had, they had in their living room, it was, it was a centerpiece, they had in their living room uh, a, a nice walnut or a nice uh, handmade gun cabinet, glass front gun cabinet. You didn't have locks on it. The, the reason why you had a lock on it was you put the lock in and turned it so the door wouldn't swing open and then you put the key up on top of the cabinet. People weren't afraid of guns in those days. Um, the first thing that I did uh, when I got into first uh, seventh grade shop was I flipped through the, the three ring binder with all the plasticized pages and I picked out a uh, three-gun rack with a drawer and a locking, you know, locking drawer, and I made that in the seventh grade. If I, if, if, if you put that drawing uh, in a shop class now, uh, you know, they'd have they'd have a SWAT team come in and there'd be helicopters overhead with with spotlights, 
Uh, you know, it was a whole different world. And that gun rack was, you just hung it on the wall and I had my, I had my Daisy BB gun uh, and I had my, my 22 and I had my shotgun in my, in my own bedroom. And that was the way things were. Um, it was not uncommon for, for kids to go to school with a gun, check in with the principal, and then pick up the gun after school and go shooting. It was not uncommon to, to see that. And of course, you know, things have changed. Uh, guns have now, now uh, become uh, things of, unfortunately, of certain people's evil minds, um, and they shouldn't be that way. So I'm speaking to the person who's, you know, an intellectual person who can understand that a gun is a good thing. And what do you do with a good thing? You become good at it. You know, some people have a piano in their living room, but they can't play it. Uh, other people have a piano in their living room and they can put a drink on it and play for their friends when they come over. Uh, that's the difference. If you have a gun, it's not just simply for show and tell. It's not, and show and tell with a gun is not just simply going up there and bop, 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 watching dirt fly. That's show and tell. That's like having the piano in your living room that you don't know anything to do with. You can go over there and bang on the key and say, oh, I have a Steinway. Now, if you're, if you're, what you want to do is, is be able to show off your own skill and to be able to pass on your own skill to the next generation. Nothing is more ideally suited to doing that than the 22, the lowly 22. That's why I call it the king of firearms. Um, it, it's, the, it's, the most, it, it's the most simple instructive tool, it doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of noise, there's no recoil involved, uh, and, it's, and it's, uh, it's, it, it's very inexpensive. So when we're learning to shoot it, uh, you know, yes you can take your 1022 to the range and learn how to, how to shoot, uh, but if, if I, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you to go selling your 1022 and I'm not going to try to tell you that your 1022 is bad. I love my 1022. It's, it's a great gun. Uh, I have a lot of fun with it. But again, it's like I can play the piano. I can play, the, I can play this instrument. I can play this instrument so I can make it sing. Um, and that's what, that's what you need to learn to do. But I don't want you to simply, uh, you know, start filling your pocket with magazines and uh, getting yourself high capacity magazines, you want to you want to divorce yourself from that mentality until you learn how to shoot. Okay, so if we're going to do that, let's let's go to the ideal sort of situation. If you're a youth, this is this is what I this is what I fabricated for. Um, you know, my uh, our friends have kids that are growing up. Uh, and becoming involved with shooting, and I'm teaching them. So I built them a nice uh, Marlin 25. I got this old Marlin 25N, been around probably a long time, probably about 35 years or so. Um, I cut about five inches off the barrel, uh, which, by the way, because the taper was originally for a long barrel, it gives it nice, uh, nice barrel diameter, and uh, it's nice weight forward. Uh, it's almost like a like a target, like a youth target barrel. Um, it's got, uh, it's got a stiff but very crisp trigger. This trigger, this trigger is about a six and a quarter pound trigger, which sounds very heavy. Uh, but you know, when you're, that's another thing. When you're learning, when you're learning to shoot, you really should learn on a heavy trigger, uh, because that that heavy trigger will teach you to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze squeeze until it goes off. You can't learn to squeeze with a two pound trigger or a three pound trigger because what you do is you can't tell the difference between simply pulling the trigger and uh, you know squeezing on it. So but a, a, a six pound a six pound trigger or a five pound trigger gives you the opportunity to apply pressure until you can understand what the squeeze is until it goes off. And unless there's any physical reason why uh, you know, a person can't squeeze a six-pound trigger, uh, then that's, this is the way to go. It should be crisp, however. You don't want to ever have a trigger that feels like you're dragging a, a can down a gravel road. That, that's not what you want. You want, to have, you, want to have no, you want to have no backlash. In other words, the trigger shouldn't travel any farther than necessary after it goes off. And it shouldn't have any creep. 
Now it can have, if you watch my other videos, it can have uh, a military trigger, two-stage trigger. That is a trigger which comes back without any, without any hesitation. It comes back to a stopping point, and then it's at that point that you apply pressure and then squeeze it off. Uh, so that's a two-stage trigger, and that's a, that's quite another thing. And that's certainly that's certainly the type of trigger which is good uh, for for learning. Um, and a and a good a good target 22 uh, should either have single loading capacity. Uh, I actually prefer I actually prefer a small stick magazine, uh, and the reason being is because when you get into when you get into positions like prone and sitting and stuff like that and with a sling on, it's very, very difficult to uh, pull yourself around and, and, and reach back or find uh, ammunition and, and put it in one at a time. But those are fine. Those are really good, those are really good to learn with. Um, I have seen, uh, I have seen uh, five round uh, magazines for, you know, the 1022. You, you don't really have to have that. You just simply, just simply load in if you've got if you've got a target with five bullseyes on it, or six bullseyes on it, or whatever, uh, you're firing one shot per bullseye, uh, then just simply load in uh, maybe one round for each of those targets, plus the one sighter. There's usually a sighter up there to make sure that you're, uh, that you're going to sight it in. But in other words, you, you, everything is of the economy of the mind. In other words, gear down, or slow down, uh, and, and don't don't do anything fast and hasty. Pretend that you're the kid who has to get dinner out of the tree with one shot com coming from a muzzle loader. Uh, that's that's the economy of mind that you have to that you have to work with. I mentioned the biathlon shooting, and this is true. This is true in so many in so many areas. Um, in certain in certain sports, you know, there's there's an opportunity to catch up, uh, and I think sometimes that's where that's where we start getting confused with shooting. Uh, if you're you know if you're in a basketball game, uh, you know, you get a point, and then the other guy gets a point. You get two points, the other guy gets a point, and then you miss two, and then then he gets one, and so it goes back and forth. So there's there's you kind of the, the score the score bounces around, and there's opportunities. To uh, you know, redeem yourself. In shooting, there's no opportunity to redeem yourself. It comes down to it comes down to one shot per person uh, between two people, and that's it. Um, if you're if you're competing if you're competing in a uh, biathlon competition or in a World Cup uh, championship in the Summer Olympics or in, in just even a, a club event. Uh, it comes down to uh, you shooting against another person, and there's no redeeming anything. Uh, when the clock is over uh, and the buzzer sounds, shooting is all done, and you don't get a chance to uh, redeem yourself. Um, you're not shooting. You're not shooting for speed. You're not shooting. You know. You're not running. This is not a. This is not a. Uh, an athletic event where you strap on a gun. And you run around from barricade to barricade, uh, shooting at shooting at stationary targets that look back at you. Uh, that's not marksmanship. You know, again, you can teach a chimpanzee to do to do that. That's all based on speed and agility, speed and agility, speed and agility. Anybody in that competition, everybody in that competition is able to hit any one of those targets. Marksmanship is not required to hit the targets. It's speed and agility. It's the person who can get through the course first. Uh, and hitting as many targets as uh, the other guy who wins. So that's not marksmanship. This, the degree of marksmanship required for that, or for bowling pin events, for instance, it's the same sort of thing. Bowling pin events is the same thing. It's, it's speed and agility. The person who can basically get his gun up there, boom, 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 boom and knock him off one at a time. Um, but that's not marksmanship because the true marksman should be able to hit those bowling pins with a handgun with one hand. He should be able to lay himself down uh, at, at 50 yards, not, not at 25 feet, but at 50 yards he, he ought to be able to knock them off one at a time without any difficulty whatsoever. So there's marksmanship and there's speed and agility. 
I did the speed and agility thing. I've done the marksman thing. Uh, you know, police police uh, shooting was all about speed and agility, but it was also in my day combined with marksmanship. In other words, the person who the person who could actually not just hit a silhouette target, but hit a place on the silhouette target, hit the X ring on the silhouette target. Um, you know, on a B twenty seven target, it meant it meant whoever could score the most X rings. Uh, that's that's the guy who won. When I was when I was competing against the state police and against the against the other towns and against um, against fishing game and stuff, you know, I had my nemesis out there. There was a guy out there that from the fishing game uh, there was a constant nuisance to me. Uh, it always came down to one round between him and me, and it was almost a it was almost a matter of uh, who had the most ice water flowing through his veins that day. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, we were we were. We were talking about uh, how many X's uh, were, were counted on the target, uh, and that, that was all the way down to 25 yards, and occasionally we shot 50-yard uh, courses. So what I'm trying to teach you is the fine skill, the fine skill of shooting uh, with expertise, not just, not just being, not just being uh, you know, capable of running around uh, without tripping and being able to draw, draw quickly. That's that's something that that's something that you can do. Even a person who uh, even a person who is a, a a skilled marksman can learn to do that. Uh, you see, if you have if you have the 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 finer skill is to learn how to shoot with precision. After that, you can add any you can add any component to it. It's like it's like when I was learning to to fly. The first component is learning how to take off in a regular aircraft, a single engine aircraft, uh, and to get that Cessna 172 in the air and to land it. That's the first, that's the first component. After you've done that, then the world opens up to you. Then you can get multi-engine, you can get, you know, rotary aircraft, helicopters and all that stuff. You can get, you know, all your different certifications. But you, you, have, to first, you have to first prove to the FAA that you can fly. So, uh, you know, those those are the those are the things that are necessary with shooting. Once you've established yourself as a precise uh, shot, once you establish yourself as a person who uh, doesn't miss what he's shooting at, then you can add any other component to what you want. Then you can put on your you can put on your Nike sneakers and you can put on your you know your black uh, pants with the with the side pockets and all that and put on your uh, logo T-shirt and you can run around the course uh, with barricades. You can do that standing on your nose, uh, but nobody nobody can do nobody can do anything un unless they really learn how to shoot first. Um, and I, certainly, I can illustrate an example of that. Uh, we we know there's a there's a there's a wonderfully skilled marksman that's on uh, YouTube all the time. Uh, he he has he has countless. He has countless videos that, that he's got out there with every um, gun imaginable uh, that he that he sits in and knocks off knocks off impossible targets uh, at impossible distances with uh, with routine uh, confidence, and that's he got that way he got that way because he learned the old way. He's my age. He learned. I don't ha I don't. I never talked. I never spoke with him. But I can guarantee you. That he got that way because he learned the old-fashioned hard way. Uh, he went down. He went down the road of hard knocks and learned how to shoot uh, with skilled precision. And then all the rest of it simply is just fun after that. Then you can do all those things. Hitting the gong, hitting the gong way out yonder becomes a piece of cake. Now, <clears throat> you see, if if you're in the if you're in the biathlon. I'm just using this as an example because it's one of the it's one of the ones that you can actually see you can actually see what's going on at the time and it requires precision. When they're shooting at those when they're shooting at those round circles out there, and they've just they've just come in from an arduous spin around the woods and around the, the mountain, uh, you know, on a on a up and down course, uh, you know, competing against other people who are very competent skiers and they, their lungs are burning. When they come in and they, they, they get down into the prone position or in, or, or in, the, or in the standing position and they've got their, they've got their uh, fine bow and 
uh, Walters and stuff like that, and they're, they're slapping that bolt back and knocking off those circles. Those circles are very unforgiving. It's one shot per circle. If you don't shoot them all, you lose, period. Uh, there's, no, there's, no redemptive, there's no redemptive issues here. There's, you, cannot, you cannot reclaim lost ground. You actually have no business whatsoever getting involved with, with any of those sports unless you can always hit the bullseye. Because the other guy over there can always hit the bullseye. It's, it's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no forgiving nature to the game whatsoever. If you can't, if you can't every time hit every one of those circles from any of the positions that are, that are provided to you, every time, if you can't do it 100% of the time before you go into the competition, then you really have no business going. You might as well not, you might as well not waste everybody's time in registering and, and flying in airfare and all that. You can go sit in the gallery and watch because you're not going to win. Uh, and that's the way, that's, this is, this is, you know, it's a blood sport. That stuff, that stuff comes down to the person who's perfect. And in order to win, you've got to be perfect. If you're not, and the person who gets the, the bronze medal is perfect. Uh, the only reason he got the bronze medal is because he skied a little slower. But the, the people who win hit every circle every single time with every single bullet fired. That's, that's the way it goes. Um, and, if, and if you miss, you know, all you can say is, uh, you know, at that point, it's all over. There's, but that's, that's the way it is when, you, when you're shooting. Uh, you have to think of every single shot that you fire as the most important shot that you will ever fire from this gun. Like this is the first shot and the last shot that you will ever again fire. In other words, that your life depends on that one shot. That's what precision shooting is all about. And if you're in the world of competition, it is, it is for your life. It's, it, this, is, this is the competition of your life. Uh, you may never again, uh, you may never again live to compete for that trophy. Uh, you, may, you may never again live to uh, shoot with these people uh, to, to try to beat them again. Uh, the guy who beats you may never again appear uh, beside you to, uh, to beat him again. So you're shooting for the you're shooting for your life. You're shooting for the one thing that you can do in your life that day, that afternoon, or that evening, uh, and and this is the only chance you get. So what I want to do, uh, what I want to do is in the next video uh, explain how to uh, find a find a particular gun uh, for this for this purpose. Um, it, it, again, I recognize that a lot of people have what they have, and I don't want to have everybody go out and think they have to sell all their guns and everything. Uh, but there are certain things that, before I even leave, I can tell you that if, if I were to buy a gun today to do uh, competitive 22 target shooting as I used to do uh, years ago, uh, I would get now, you know, this, this is my own, this is my own uh, recommendation, I would go find myself uh, a gun that really, they're not made anymore, they, you know, because that type of sport has become uh, less uh, common. Uh, the the type of gun that I used to that I used to use the old you know the old Remington Target Masters or the the Winchester Model 52s and all these guns that had fine triggers. Uh, they had they had beautiful barrels. Uh, they they actually most of them were made for uh, position shooting. In other words, they had a they had a uh, a hand bar right here, uh, and you use it with a with a mitt. You know, whether you get into that type of shooting or not is uh, academic. It does. You don't need to get into. You don't need to get into that type of shooting. Where, you know, where you get the the boots and the leather jacket with you know strapped up like a uh, straight jacket. You don't need. You don't need to get into that in order to learn how to shoot uh, with with confidence and precision. But it it is it is good to get a gun that's capable of doing that sort of thing. And I would certainly get a gun uh, that has no that has no open rear sight on it like this. I would get a gun that has a, a very nice uh, adjustable rear peep sight, adjustable for elevation and windage. Um, I would look for I would look for a gun that has that feature incorporated with the gun, and and ideally I'd get one with a globe front sight. Uh, you can look these things up online. So look for globe as in a 
in the world, a globe front sight. It uh, has different discs that can be slipped into the uh, slot and they give you different apertures and different, uh, different uh, post bead configuration, uh, different diameter apertures and things like that that can, you can circle onto a target. The rear sights are the rear sights are usually something that can be uh, with a thumb screw can be removed from the gun so that the gun uh, can be stored safely without getting banged because those sights are real, you know these are these are competition sights and they're big and bulky and uh, they they provide they they, uh, they they provide the very best sight picture with big uh, discs iris discs and stuff but they but they're fragile so you want to be able to take them off. You notice I didn't say anything about scopes. Um, when you're learning to shoot, uh, you, you, really, you really don't need a scope, and I'll be very honest with you, uh, a scope will get in your way and it'll hinder your performance. Um, you want to learn to become confident in your sighting ability. Sighting with, with, iron, with iron sights, with, with, receive, with a receiver sight, that's called a peep sight that's mounted with those uh, adjustable features. Uh, and with replaceable irises, those are called receiver sights. They're mounted on the receiver. But you want to have a you want to have a gun that has uh, those features if you can. Um, a scope will simply magnify what you're looking at. Um, it it doesn't it doesn't increase the accuracy of the gun. I'll repeat that. A scope has nothing to do with the accuracy of the gun. Uh, if you if you mount any gun in a uh, vice and you pull the trigger whether it's got a scope on it or whether it's got nothing on it it's going to shoot the same a scope has nothing to do with the accuracy a scope a telescope only magnifies an image uh, that that your eye can see a target uh, with greater definition uh, but you won't you, you it won't make the gun any more accurate and won't make you any more accurate um, it's it's fascinating to watch it's fascinating to watch you know large bore shooters, big bore shooters at, at the club, uh, and, and they, they lay down prone and they're shooting hundreds of yards away uh, with, their, with their Garands and with their M1As and things like that, and they're using peep sights. Uh, I know some of them use scopes, but, and I know the rules that accommodate scopes for certain competitions, but the ones that they're using, they're using peep sights with the globe front apertures and stuff like that, and they're, they're shooting way out yonder. Uh, and they've got no magnification whatsoever, and they turn in groups that are just the same size as somebody who went out there with a scope. Um, it's because everything is about the, the, the sight's definition of the target. That's all it is. So in other words, if you have the right size, if you have the right size aperture, and you have the right size peak for the day, in other words, the, the light gathering ability of the diameter of the hole and things like that, if all those things dialed in, and they, and they do, uh, they dial that in with just as much precision as anybody dials in a scope. Uh, and with all the clicks and everything, uh, it, they can get it done. So, uh, it's, it's nice to be able to learn how to shoot with, with iron sights, to have, to have confidence. Um, you know, when you, when you can get to the point where, and I'm going to get off track here, but when, I, when you get to the point where you can stand there and you can fascinate people by, you know, shooting... Uh, by shooting at basketball-sized targets at 100 yards with your 45, 19, 11, that's, that's an accomplishment that most people could never even dream of doing. But you can do it, and you can do that with a rifle, and you don't need to have, you don't need to have a scope in order to accomplish that. It's all a matter of target acquisition. Okay, so you know what, you know what you're after. Uh, I'll try to be back here uh, with more information on uh, how to shoot. I think I probably will have to uh, get a uh, get somebody who's young and youthful that I can sprawl out on the ground and uh, demonstrate uh, prone positions and positions I no longer can get into with my uh, my 50s vintage uh, gut here. But um, that's it for now. Thank you and God bless.